All right. Hey. Ooh, that's loud. That's loud. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Um, we're going to tell you a great story today about how Mike and his team at StatPearls went from complete data chaos uh, to delivering marketing campaigns that are driven by machine learning. Um, uh, I'm Eric Dodds. I'm the head of product marketing for Rudderstack. Uh, but Mike, this is your story. So tell us about your background and tell us about StatPearls. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, Mike Spurdy, uh, Vice President of Engineering at Stat Pearls. Um, I come from the, the Syracuse, New York area. Um, actually, my background is in medical devices with uh, well, companies like Well Challenge and doing um, like deep learning on embedded devices. Um, several years ago, though, I started making a transition to, to web-based uh, technologies with Stat Pearls. Um, and Stat Pearls is a healthcare and uh, technology company that has curated Oh, with contributions from all over the world, healthcare professionals, over 10,000 uh, medical publications and 100,000 medical uh, questions. Um, and kind of the secret sauce is how we um, organize the data to present it to the different professions, whether it's doctor, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians. And you have a pretty complicated data schema because of all those 500 different courses, 100,000 questions, all the medical professionals. What challenges did that create for you, that complicated schema, when you started to try to mine insights from, from all the data that you have? Yeah. Well, you know, what we really offer is exam, exam prep. So for doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners, they all have to take different exams, whether it's their nursal certifications or maintenance of certifications. And even to maintain your license, there's continuing education. So we have a very complex product structure where there's over 500 different exams. Each exam might have a different subscription model because we're a subscription company. So one month, six month, um, and then there's continuing education on top of it. So there's just a lot of products, a lot of product SKUs, and a lot of data that we're trying to organize and like understand who's buying what, what professions are buying what, um, and so forth. And so when you were in chaos mode, how were, like, what was your methodology for trying to wrangle all that data? How were you doing that? Yeah, well, the first several years we were really focused on content creation, right? Yep. So we were, we were getting all the data ready. About two, two, year, two and a half years ago, we really launched commercially to, to monetize the content. Yep. And, you know, right off the bat, when you're a small company, you're trying to organize your data. And really everything was self contained in, like, our own databases and trying to write SQL scripts to mine our, who's buying what, and what SKUs are selling on that day, and where is it from, and, and how can you advertise better on that. Yeah. Um, so that was like the start of it where it's all request driven. You know, <laughs> what yes. am I doing today, or you know, how much should we sell today, and who's buying what? Yeah, uh, I mean, data teams love it when those JIRA tickets come in with an ad hoc request yeah. that's gonna require hundreds of lines of SQL. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about the first step that you took, which was really getting clean first party data into Redshift, your data warehouse. That was the starting point. Why did you start there? Yeah, well, like the first step is really, okay, so you're trying to scale this because we realized just like all self-contained our own database is not the way to go, right? So now you're trying to actually develop a real marketing stack that you, know, you, can, you can actually learn from. Yep. Um, so really the, the biggest thing was Rudderstack's help in organizing our, our marketing, right? Like, where are things going in and out to our data warehouse? Um, you know, how is it organized? What third-party tools are we using, like Stripe and SendGrid and, Seg and uh, uh, Intercom and all that? So, like that, that's like creating a clear uh, network stack map for our marketing team to understand to be on the same page with the engineering team mm. was like was like critical. Yeah, that's incredible. So, you set up Rudderstack to collect the data and have a clear map of where all the data is coming from and where it's going to. And I have to congratulate you. <laughs> Getting engineering and marketing on the same page is quite a feat. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah it was, well, it's, it's easier when you're a small company and there's not too many marketing people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, OK, so now you're collecting clean first party data. You have this data in Redshift. But as you and I have talked about you know, for many months, just having a bunch of clean data in your warehouse in Redshift is really just the starting point. I mean, that's a challenge in and of itself. But once the data was all in there, you really need to focus on solving an identity resolution problem. 
why was it a pain point for you, and what did you do you know, when you started trying to use all that data in the warehouse? Yeah, the, the real light bulb moment was, okay, so you've got all this great data in your data warehouse, but how do you actually get information out of it? Mm. We thought, oh, let's hook up a BI tool. You know, just, just throw all of our data into a BI tool. We can just you know, figure it around and, and figure out what we needed to. But really quick, we realized that like, we'd still have to make that customer mapping between Stripe and Intercom and our own database identifiers and whatever other third-party tools we're using. So like, trying to get all that data organized, we'd either have to do it in the BI tool, and then there's concerns like, well, if you don't want to use that BI tool anymore, then you're going to have to like, redo it all again in a different BI tool. Or do you do this in your, your own data warehouse with like SQL code? But then anytime you want to change something or add something new, you got to write, rewrite brand new SQL code to mine yep. out that data again. So that was like, a, we thought we had it all, and then we, we turned it on, and we're like, all right, we still got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so you didn't want to write thousands of lines of gnarly SQL that only a few people knew how to touch. Yeah. So you used Rudderstack profiles, and actually we just launched profiles for Redshift uh, right here at reInvent, um, which is really exciting. You were an early customer, uh, really helped give us a lot of feedback and build the product. What do you use Rudderstack profiles for at StatPearls uh, within Redshift? Yeah, so you know, once we got past the BI you know, trauma, Rudderstack really helped us with this profiles tool. Now we get clean um, profile data about our users. So we actually get data, valuable data out of our data warehouse where we can cohort our users. We know this is a doctor, this is a nurse, this is a nurse practitioner group. We can look at what products they purchased, what are they interested in, you know, and, and we, with the profiles we can add attributes to that profile relatively easily without having to create like full out blown SQL scripts now. Um, so it really gives insight into our data and start looking at like the KPIs that we're interested in to look at how our products are doing and how can we remarket to our customers. So it sounds like you really did sort of build that full 360 degree view of your customer. Absolutely. What were some of the key metrics that were really game changing for you when you actually built out that complete customer profile? What were the, you know, sort of those KPIs that you were looking for? Yeah, the first thing we're looking to solve is like any, when you have a customer on a subscription plan, what is like the lifetime value of that customer? Mm. How, how are you actually like doing with that customer besides that first initial sale? Um, so understanding the lifetime of, the, of that user and then the subscription renewal rate. Because in a subscription product, you know, it's not just that first sale, it's the recurrence of that first sure. sale. And th that's like the key metrics of like, you know, how much can you invest into that and what's your, what's your acquisition costs on new customers. Like that was the first thing we really needed to solve and understand more. Makes total sense. Now, I want to ask you, if you had to estimate how much time it would have taken you to hand roll all of that in SQL and Redshift, you know, can you just give us a sense of how was it? How much faster was it doing it through Rudderstack profiles than trying to hand roll it in Redshift? Yeah, honestly, it was a monumental effort at the time because you know, going from a curation of documents and, and medical content to a sales cycle, the engineering effort is focused on product development, you know, mm. not data mining. Sure. So I don't know if we'd have the resources or have the time to really truly invest what we needed to do. So I know it wouldn't be done as, as, as well as it is today, and we'd still be lacking some of that information. So with the, rudder, with the rudder stack profiles, we were really able to accelerate um, the sales and in, in where we wanted to be today. Awesome. OK, well, let's, so now you have a, a complete view of your customers. You understand lifetime value and renewal rate, OK? So now you have really valuable data in your arsenal. What was the first business problem that you tackled with that arsenal of data? Yeah, so you know, it goes back to that subscription renewal and that lifetime value. So we're, we're pumping money into Google AdWords, right? And we don't really know what our return on investment is. So you spend money on Google AdWords, you get a, a 0.8 or a 0.9 return, it looks like you're losing money. But Google AdWords doesn't count renewals, so it's recurring subscriptions. It doesn't account for like a doctor who doesn't need us right now, so they saw an advertisement, but they don't actually use us for six months. So right. it doesn't count like that type of long time attribution to that first ad campaign. Um, so using Rudderstack profiles, like we realize now what our true sales cycle is, or our, our, our development for the for the um, ad Google AdWords, and we know it's a, it turned into a math problem. So we know now 
the, we put in so much into Google AdWords, and we get a return on it. It's really turned into a math problem and allowed us to crank the dial on that. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I hadn't thought about that, that you know, when you consider the entire lifetime value of a subscription customer, you could have a relationship with them that's multiple years long, but Google only counts the initial conversion uh, in terms of your return, and yeah. so you're drastically undercounting the value of the customer you're acquiring. Yes. What did you discover? How were you? I mean, it sounds like you weren't spending enough money that yeah. you were. You you actually could increase budget. Yep. It it allowed us to really um, just work on the math problem. It turns into a pure cash flow where we just crank the dial up, and we knew it, it was just a math problem. We knew if we invested this much, we'd get this much return back. And it, you know, it, it allows us to just go, and it was really extremely helpful. And we wouldn't have got that insight as fast without without Rudderstack profiles. And so, can you just give me a sense? I mean, how much did you increase your Google Ads budget? Yeah, we increased it like four x um, in, in Google <laughs> Ads. So wow. we were really able to wow. crank it up. Yeah, that's incredible. With confidence, because before we didn't have confidence on that return, but now it's like we have confidence in it, and we can manage. We, we'll know not only the return, but how long we'll get the return back. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, I mean, any marketer who can you know, have their engineering team come and say, hey, we need to 4x the budget you know, is, is pretty wild. So uh, that's incredible. OK, so you have full customer profiles in Redshift. You're using that data to analyze attribution and get your marketing spend efficiency uh, to a point where you can drastically increase your budget and keep your acquisition costs low. The next step for you is actually going from rearward looking analytics to actually starting to take action on predicting what your customers were going to do. Yeah. So can you tell us why you wanted to go from rearward looking? I mean, you had already had so much success, but what was the big problem you wanted to solve um, you know, in terms of using machine learning and starting to incorporate predictive traits? Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Now with Rudderstack, they helped us integrate machine learning models into our profiles tool. So we had like churn prediction scores, right? And being all in a profile, it's just another attribution you can use. So it allows us to take direct marketing action on those predictive measures. And that's like a really powerful thing to know that like there's a prediction score and you can take action, not just on a general population cohort of users, but on specific like doctor cohorts or nurse cohorts. And you can tailor ad campaigns. Sure marketing emails right directly to those, uh, to those specific cohort groups. And this is all happening right in Redshift. So yeah. you, don't, you didn't actually scaffold out like a machine learning or data science team internally to build this out. You're using Rudderstack profiles. Correct, yeah. OK, and yep. what was the first predictive trait you wanted to target? Yeah, it was a, the churn prediction, like, like how often you know, the, the, the renewals, because that, that was a key metric for us, is that renewal rate on subscription products. So that was, that was kind of the first key metric of like, okay, how do we, do, you know, you look at the churn prediction and cross-sell, upsell, yep. and, and, you know, get to our users for, for, you know, more opportunity to sustain them longer. And so what, can you just describe the user experience of that a little bit, right? Because when you have, you go from analytics to machine learning, usually those are pretty separate workflows, but you're generating a churn score with a machine learning model. What's the user experience of like, of, Get, you know, how do you get that churn score? You know, my churn score is yeah. whatever, 0.97. You yeah. know, how do you get that onto my profile and then eventually to the marketing team? Yeah. With profiles, it's really nice because it, you can add attributes to that profiles table. So it doesn't break the existing ad campaigns or, or things we have mm. currently set up. It's really just another attribution to the, to the user, to the user table. And, you know, that, this is more direct action right off of that already existing cohort of users. Uh, the marketing team is a clean handoff between engineering and marketing. So en engineering with very little effort can add ac uh, additional attributes, and marketing team can just take action on them. Wow. It's a really nice handoff spot. So you're, just, so you're generating this churn score, and you're just appending it as a column to that customer 360 table that you already have in Redshift. Yeah, correct, yeah. Wow, that's yeah, it's incredible. really nice. Really. And then can you explain how you get it from that table into the marketing tools, right? Because it's, you know, yeah. it sounds like the marketing team wants to send an email to people with a high you know, possibility to churn, yeah. but it's in Redshift. So how do you get it back out to the marketing tools? Right within the Rudderstack Profiles tool, it allows us to like, cohort those users and send it to third-party apps. 
whether it's send grid email campaigns or, or intercom banners or whatever marketing tools we want to use, our own email system for, for direct ads, um, it really just enables, Rudderstack enables us to take that profiles, that cohort of users, and export it right in, Rud, um, in Rudderstack to whatever tool set we want to use. Wow. So that churn really score powerful. is going directly from that table in Redshift right into the marketing, the yeah. email marketing tool that your marketing team's yep. using. And yep. they can segment and send the emails. Exactly. Man, that's incredible. Um, so next question, what, you did churn prediction. What's next, yeah. right? Yeah, so you know, Rudderstack's approached us about a, a, a bunch of different um, ML models. And I think one of the ones we're looking at next is like incoming funnel. Like likely, likelihood to buy and in, in, in other incoming funnel, um, you know, like hit them now with an ad because that's like when they're strike one of the top, right? Yep. If they're interested and they've hit the touch points that you're real, uh, like that's they're likely to buy. That's you know, add that to the attribute table for our profiles and then and then hit them with marketing campaigns, whether it's banner pop ups or emails. Yeah, you know? makes total sense. Well, I mean, what an incredible journey going from querying your app database with ad hoc SQL to actually using you know, machine learning traits in your marketing. I, one more question for you. you know, in, data infrastructure costs a lot of money, right? You're paying money for Redshift. You're paying money for, for Rudderstack. Yeah. You, as an engineering leader, have to justify to the CFO what, your budget, right? Um, you know, and you know, in this environment, we need to be yeah. efficient. So, what does that look like for you? How do you justify yeah. your infrastructure spend? It's actually really easy because our entire marketing is based off of it. So between Redshift and Rudderstack, all of our ad, you know, email targeting is all based off of it. And it's, and it's like, makes it really easy for our marketing team to just go and take action. And it really allowed us to accelerate growth, be where we want to be today, and even push even further. So it's really an easy justification because it's driving our sales and it's increasing our sales. And every improvement uh, Rudderstack makes for the profiles pulls right from Redshift and, and, and targets our audiences that we, we wanted to do. Awesome. Well, uh, we have time for a couple questions if anyone has them, but we'll be at booth uh, 1103. If you want to see the product, we'd love to give you a demo.